Okay, the next criticism is that the Yang Gang is full of bots and UBI zealots. Oh, you know, all these Twitter people don't have pictures. Um, look, Yang raised $10 million in the third quarter in federal election committee filings. He had the highest dollar uh, growth from second quarter to third quarter, uh, second only to Bernie himself. So he had a larger dollar increase than uh, Warren or Buttigieg. Uh, Buttigieg actually went down. And um, we're shooting for $30 million this quarter. So this notion that, oh, the Yang Gang's not real, it's a bunch of bots, it's real. And unless you're going to make the assertion that uh, all of this money is coming from bots. Now, speaking of bots... Let me show you something. This is a company that does social media analytics, Spark Toro, and they do audits of people's followers. And Yang almost has a million followers as we're recording this. But in fairness, 23% are potentially fake. So you might argue, whoa, that's, that's kind of concerning. Accounts with similar size following to Yang have actually a median of 32% fake followers. And if you look at Bernie, remember this number, 23% fake for Yang. How many fake followers does Bernie have? Well, he has 39.7% fake followers. 3.9 million fake followers. These are accounts that are unreachable. You will not see the account's tweets because they're spam, bots, propaganda. They're inactive. You can see here a good chunk are lower quality. So the notion that Yang is somehow has the most fake followers is a, is a load of crap in percentages and absolute terms. Now, Elizabeth Warren, she has 36.7% fake, 1.2 million. So um, Yang has the most authentic following on Twitter compared to Warren and Sanders. Um, ah, should we look at Mayor Pete? Let's see. Mayor Pete, let's see his. He has 28%. Yeah, so more than more fake percentage than, than Yang, who again has 23 and then the other argument is that, oh, we're just a bunch of um, UBI zealots. I mean, the thing about UBI is that it trusts people and it tries to treat everybody equally. And the federal jobs guarantee involves, again, the government and the federal government determining what people should do. So, yeah. I believe certainly that UBI is a more elegant, efficient, powerful policy. Uh, the other argument I've heard is like, oh, you want to give money to the UBI to, uh, to millionaires. Here's the deal. If you want to get this thing passed, you need to avoid having it be framed as a wealth transfer from rich individuals to poor individuals. Because if you do have it framed that way, it will not get passed and it will not serve the general election candidate well. Now, here's the good news. Let's just look at the numbers here. Let me show you something. Here is a chart of US income distribution in 2018. Even if you just look at people earning $200,000 and more, that's only eight. 0.5% of the population. So if you're worried about eight out of every hundred people getting the freedom dividend, here's the question. Do you get so pissed that those eight out of a hundred people are getting the dividend that you don't want the other 92 to receive their dividend? Because I'll tell you what, if you say that the freedom dividend is just for people who earn 200K and less, you will not get support. You will not get donors. You will not get any Republicans, any Libertarians. No one will get it. So 
this argument that, oh, Yang's policy is terrible because we're giving thousand dollar checks to Jeff Bezos. That's a that's a load of baloney because the Jeff Bezoses of the world are so few and far between. It doesn't matter. They're not going to represent more than a few percent of the total freedom dividend budget. So why are we worried about whether they get it or not? If it helps us get it passed, right? It's just crazy. So, so that in summary is my response to the Medicare for all brouhaha. Number one, that term is way too generous for what Warren and Bernie are proposing because they're proposing a national health care plan, a single payer plan, mandatory Medicare, elimination of all private insurance. They didn't invent the term. Ted Kennedy used it in his act, Medicare for All Act of 2006, was, which was a public option, did not eliminate private health care. So you could argue Yang's plan is actually more representative of the real Medicare for all plan. And number three, like, come on, like, we're all trying to do the same thing, man. Like, what's the big deal? He wants to, I mean, if he introduces the public option and a strong one, it's going to be a huge freaking deal for the country. So like, give the guy some slack. Secondly, this notion that it's not disruptive enough when he's going to be doing something that Obama couldn't do when he's going to be increasing the Medicare program to be a over trillion dollar program. Like that's plenty ambitious enough in my opinion. And then thirdly, this notion that the Yang Gang is full of bots and, you know, zealots is, is also inaccurate. Um, when you look at the data, uh, Bernie has more fake followers as a percentage and in absolute terms. And Yang Yang actually has the most authentic following out there compared to Warren and Buttigieg and Bernie. And he's raised 10 million last quarter and we're going for 30 million this quarter and bots don't give money, right? These are all FEC registered official donations. Hopefully we can all agree that we all don't want Trump to be reelected. And that's probably the thing that gets me the most about this Medicare for all stuff. Like I get the ambition and I get the end game and I get the ideals, but we're not going to get there if we lose to Trump in the general. And we did last time. And one of the few things that can activate the Trump base is arguments about socialism. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, well, isn't the UBI going to be labeled as socialism? It might be. But every Trump voter, if UBI is passed, will get $1,000 a month. Every Trump voter, if Bernie-style Medicare or Warren-style Medicare for all is passed, is going to lose their private health insurance. Which one do you think they're going to vote for? Which one are they more likely to be open to?